welcome to what is going to be unofficially called all the shit I've knit. <laughs> My name is Alex. This is the Serenity Knitting Podcast. We're based out of Australia, north coast of New South Wales. I have filmed this intro before, can you tell? <laughs> and I will post the blooper on my Instagram, which is, oh, that was a big car noise, um, at the Serenity Knitting Society podcast. Yay! Okay, so I did start filming this before. There was a lawnmower. So now this lawn mowing human has moved on. Um, I... I'm going to do this in parts, I think, because some parts will be bigger than others. I don't have that much stuff, but I do have quite a bit. So we'll see. We'll see what we get through. First section is going to be mittens and gloves, as you will already be able to see from the title of this. I am drinking off screen. I am drinking a lovely tea. It's a tea to tea. It's my Melbourne breakfast tea. How many times did I just say tea? Four, at least. Um, it's my favourite, like, black tea that I have. I also really like the New York tea from T2. Um, and I'm drinking in this real cute tin mug, like, think happy campers. Um, and I bought this from the, I think it's called the General Store in Nundal, which is not far from, it's about 45 minutes, 40 minutes-ish from Tamworth, where I used to live. And I have two of these little campy mugs, one for me, one for my husband, and some bakeware from there, and I love it. And downside, because they're obviously metal, and metal conducts heat, science Alex, um, they're quite warm and hot, so I won't drink out of it straight away, but that's what I'm drinking. I think this is the first podcast, which is not really a podcast, but you know what I mean where I have had anything other than coffee. But that's because now it's about 12.30. Don't get me wrong, I could drink coffee now, but I've had one today. I've had one today and I'm doing okay. And I'm thinking that there's a nap coming this afternoon and if I caffeinate too much, I won't nap. I mean, I could, but anyway. I'm drinking tea because I want to. <laughs> I don't need to explain myself. Okay, so let's let's get straight into it. I've got three pairs of, of mittens to start off with, so I thought I'd start us out with a nice, nice light, fresh one. <laughs> These are the Cloudburst mittens. I'm going to try and do them in order of the ones that I've knit first. That will get harder as I do my shawls and jumpers and socks and stuff. But this should be fine because I remember these. These are the Cloudburst mittens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there, see? This is a free pattern on Ravelry by, let's find out. I pulled up my project pages so that I wouldn't have to write this down. But naturally, over there. Cloudburst Fingerless Gloves, Cloudburst by Ariane Gray. Cute. I made these as a very workhorse you can see on the back there's been a little bit of pilling. I made these as workhorse gloves for when I was working out on a property. It was freaking cold. <laughs> um, I also think this was quite an ambitious first um, mitten project. However, when I say ambitious, not impossible. Um, it was the lace chart is very, it's a free pattern, so I can say this. Very simple and as far as, you know, Knits, pearls, knit two togethers. I think there might have been some make one rights, make one lefts for the thumb gusset, but nothing that you couldn't YouTube, which is I think what I did. Um, I knit it out of the Nundle sock yarn. I think it's called Chaffee, after the Chaffee Dan. And I held it together with FOMO, <laughs> which I think is a very clever name, but I don't love the yarn. It's from um, Spotlight. It's a, well, a, a faux mohair. Look, I bought some, I always do this to myself. I always look at the price tag of some of the yarns from Spotlight and go, ooh, yarn for less. Feels great in the ball, but then I start knitting it up and I'm not really happy with it. This would actually be the exception to the rule in as far as, I don't know if I would be using it again, the FOMO, in anything else other than the gloves. I did feel like 
These are real workhorse gloves. I wore them. I wore the crap out of these. I basically left them in my jacket pocket. Um, they, they warmed my hands significantly. They also warmed many small children's hands. I was a nanny out on a property um, when we went for walks and they would hold my hands because then I could wrap them up in the gloves. Um, I'm very happy with actually how they, they look and I'm very happy with how they turned out. I would 100% knit these again. Um, pattern was excellent. A little bit of working out, like it is a free pattern, so it's not like it doesn't hold your hand. But like I said, I think this is my first glove pattern. Glove pattern? First glove project pattern thing. And I worked my way through it and I wasn't, you know, a very prolific knitter at this point. I used a 2.75 mil circular needle. I probably used some DPNs for the thumbs. What else do I need to tell you about this? Nothing. I like them. I will continue to use them. I could definitely pull... Uh, you, you think that what I would do is before this I would go, hmm, let's go through all my knits and deep pill them and make them look pretty for the internet. No. <laughs> what you see is what you get, friends. Wait until you get to the sock video. I'm like, I, there's a few in there that I'm like, maybe I should like, maybe I should wash those in advance. We have just moved, so not everything is spick and span. We'll see. I feel like we're all friends here. If you're... It's like that real... I love... <laughs> I say a lot of reels in real life, which you shouldn't really do because they're meant for the internet. But you know the reel where it's like, um, if you follow my page, I don't know if it's actually in a southern accent. If you follow my page and you want to see like perfect professional page, I'm a human. <laughs> it's like, like, yep, that's me. I'm a human. I have pills on stuff and sometimes my socks aren't clean. <laughs> so yeah, these are my first ones. I'm super happy with them. Yay. Right, got fluff on my face. I think I need to like, you know how, you know how people have like end up having catchphrases in their, um, in their podcasts. I think one of my catchphrases is going to be "there's fluff on my face." Oh, that's a car just going up that driveway. Okay, lady or sir or human. They're gone. Uh, I think I'm going to have there's fluff on my face and also pill like a mofo. The amount of people who commented or mentioned pill like a mofo, I didn't realise when I said it, um, but many, many humans have put that in somewhere when they've contacted me being like super relatable. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Cloudburst mittens. Second mittens. These ones actually turned out way better than I thought they would. Let's make sure I've got the name for them. Okay, these are the Nagu Selbu. Hope I'm saying that right. It says every podcaster ever. The Nagu Selbu Knits by Alina Ermis. Umis? Ermis. How freaking pretty are these, if I do say so myself? So these are gorgeous, not what I was going to say, but true. These are, I love these so much, I need to wear these more. These, like I said, Nago Selby by Alina Omis, they're knit in Ramathenol. I knit them on a 2.75 mil needle. And actually, I have the colours, I have the colour names of these on my Ravelry page. Now, here's what you need to know. I'm Australian. There's a good chance I'm going to butcher the names of everything. I'm going to do my best, but I I think it's a combination of genuinely I don't speak any other languages, but also Australian accents tend to, like, God love us. Like, our pronunciation tends to be particularly, um, I don't know, we just don't, we just don't pronounce things particularly gracefully. So um, just keep that in mind, okay, friends? So we've got um, colorway four o. So this is Ramalfino, as I said, four o seven eight. Lise beige Malay, Malur. It's spelled Malert, but I'm almost. Com I'm pretty damn confident that T is not. <laughs> that T is not uh, actually pronounced. Uh, Lise beige Malay. Hmm. Look at me. 
it's I think because it's I bought this in a, I bought this from a special a Spass Tricot so there's like a slight chance that these could be in French or they could be in Norwegian which I also don't speak and I don't recognize the language I also have a skein of 4121 orange Malay Malo Millet it's not Millet <laughs> Um, and I, again, bought those from a Co. Um, basically, rust oat. That's what I'm calling them. Um, oh yeah, here's the backs. So the, the actual pattern itself is for full, like, Selbu mittens with the pointed top. I, as I said in my last, maybe not my last one, but one of the videos where I showed my updated Bobby Dazzler um, mittens by... I think it's Kerry Malley or Kerry Malley. I live in a, like Australia, we're, we're cold. Mittens are necessary, as you will see very shortly. However, as far as things I'm gonna get the most wear, most wear out of, it's probably not gonna be like six pairs of mittens. So I decided to make these fingerless. And this is when I was living in a mountainous region. I now live in a tropical location. <laughs> which I've only just kind of uh, come to acceptance around. Like, I actually live in the tropics, which is hilarious. I am wearing a woolen sweater. I'm wearing my ranunculus in keepsake yarn, um, which is an organic wool, but I'm not wearing um, anything underneath it currently. It's, a, it's about 20 degrees today, so it's a bit cooler. Um, yeah, so I kind of was like, look, I'm not really going to... I was worried I wouldn't get all that much wear out of. And when I knit these, I did knit these when I lived in a mountainous space, but I was worried I wouldn't get all that much wear out of multiple pairs of um, actual... Oh, look, so cute. Um, I just love them. Um, out of mittenie mittens. So I decided to make them fingerless. Um, now, I'm almost confident... I'm almost, almost confident. I'm almost sure that there were um, gusseted thumbs and that these were the pattern continued up here, as in my Bobby Dazzlers. In these, I decided not to do that. I was just lazy and I didn't really want to. There could also be like a real traditional Selbu cuff. Again, if, I, if there was, I was lazy and I just didn't want to. Um, I just wanted some colour work. I fucking love the way that... Um, Funnel works out in colour work. I need a sweater in this. Can can confirm. I just love the feel. I love the way it's almost like. To me, it's almost like watercolours, where just the way that the yarns kind of stick and grip together. The fabric is so. I was gonna say seamless, but you know what I mean. Like it's it's. It is. It's like painting. And sometimes I look at these and I can't quite believe that I've done them. <laughs> Like, I really, I really love them. And yeah, so I did basically, I basically just did a couple of rows of very little ribbing up here. They're a little loose because you can imagine maybe what I might have done next time is I might have um, done a quick decrease round. Once I got finished with the colour work, I might have decreased a little bit. So they sat a bit more snugly around my fingers. I don't think it's a massive issue. Like, I'm not going to not wear them. They're a little looser. And I think when it's really cold, um, that's noticeable. But realistically, I am happy with them. I do wish I had a gusset here. I learnt my lesson with these ones where I do like a gusset. And they're not that hard to do. And I think next time I will... Well, the next time I did, I did do the gusset. But with these, I just wasn't, I wasn't ready yet. And so I'm actually really happy with them. And I need to wear them more, to be honest. I don't wear a lot of rust. This was, I, so you'll, there's a few things here where I went through a bit of a, um, a bit of an Ingrid. You know what? I think I called in my last video Inga Ingrid, which I don't know why I did that because I like definitely know her name because I watched all the videos. Anyway, Inga from Knitting Traditions. I think I went through a bit of an Inga phase and I was like wanting to be Inga. <laughs> and so I knit everything in rust and oat. I actually don't wear a lot of those colours. I should though, because truly, like, A, I think they suit me. I mean, watch my glasses. But B, um, I love them. It's not that I don't like them. I just don't probably... 
Someone told me a really long time ago that the oat color washes me out and now it's really freaked me out. And I just think, to be honest with you, wear, wear whatever the fuck you want. Like, who cares if old mate four years ago told you that that color doesn't suit you? Stuff them. Like, <laughs> if you like it, wear it. So I'm going to take my own advice there. And um, actually, I'm planning a, um, a shawl. I've got this beautiful color. I've got this magpie fibers in stag bunny. It is like an OT, almost pinky tinged color. And I think I'm going to knit it. I was going to like, I, I, it freaked me out and I bought it thinking it was a different color than what it actually was. And then when I got it, it was more oat. Anyway, I think I'm actually going to knit it. I think I'm going to hold it with some mohair, maybe from a longer vec Anna in June. Anyway, side note, Alex is getting distracted. These are my mittens. Yay. So yeah, nice quick one, friends. She says that she tells you 45 stories about things that are not related to the, to the video. Okay, last pair of mittens. I think this will be my first episode. Part of me was like, should I have released a, should I have done a bigger one to start off with? But look, what is? We're just doing this to hang out. The other option is I suppose I could combine this with my beanies. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I'll do that. She decides halfway through the video. Look at me, so profesh. These are my Bromont mittens. Yay! These ones, okay, so I must admit, the actual mitteny mittens are making me very happy. They make me feel so cute. So I didn't grow up wearing mittens. I didn't live anywhere with mittens. This is my first pair of mittens I ever owned. Look at them, so cute. <laughs> like how I keep holding my face. These are the Bromont mittens by Diana Waller. Why do I feel like this had to do with a sparse tricot for a while, this pattern? Maybe not. Maybe I'm making that up. There's a matching hat. Um, these again, have a little guess what they're knit out of. Rama Fiedel. <laughs> um, the thumbs on these are amazing. Now, actually, you know what? These don't have a gusset. Why do these work so well? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know why these worked so well, but I really like. <laughs> Just watch myself. Just, okay. Random. <laughs> oh dear. I, yeah, so I knit these in Rama Fennel. Let me see if I can see Fennel. Sorry, let me, that's my Australian coming through. Let me see if I can find the colors that I purchased. So, um, I used a 2.25 mil for the cuff. Do you know what? I think that's a lie because I didn't actually think at this point I had that. <laughs> it's a very noisy truck. Excuse me, sir, madam, person. Anyway. You might be able to hear that. I don't think I owned a needle that small when I made these. And I just, because I, I, and here's why I know, because I still don't own a needle that small. <laughs> so I think that could be a little, either a mistake or a sneaky fib. I think it's more likely a mistake. Um, but I've got a 2.75. That would be logical. I own one of those. Uh, and I would have owned one of those at this point. I used the colors off-white. I don't actually have the code for that, but I imagine it's whatever the naturalist, it's not the white white or it's not a, it's just a natural white. I'll hold them up close so you can see. A natural white. I use the color 405 charcoal and 4138 heather light powder pink. Again, Purchased from a Spas Tricot. If you're in Australia, I recently found out you can now buy Rama Funeral from um, Little Woolly Makes, which is based out of Melbourne or Victoria. I don't know if it's Melbourne specifically, but Victoria. Um, I will be doing that <laughs> at some point very soon. I looked at their website, it's like a candy shop, which is funny because we don't call it candy. Lollies, it's like a lolly shop. Um, there's so many, there's like every freaking color of the rainbow. I would actually love to also make a throw blanket out of um, phenol, I think that there was one I looked up. I wonder if I can find it real quick on here to tell you the name of it. 
Um, also, Ravelry is amazing and I know that there are um, some people who are unable to use it due to... Um, I know that it, there's an impact on people's vision and based on the colours and the way that the um, formatting of it is, that it's giving people headaches and migraines and there's like, it's not inclusive in the way that they have formatted it. Um, I don't want to pretend to know more about that than I do, but I recognise that there are some people who are unable to use it and that that is something that Ravelry could choose to change and that they don't choose to change. Um, I think that's really disappointing. Um, I must admit I didn't keep up with exactly the whole um, reason why Ravelry made that clear, but I do believe that if Ravelry could be doing something to make their page more ex um, inclusive for all people, that's something I'd like to see them doing. Um, however, in saying that, I do use Ravelry and I really value Ra Ravelry and I feel like I get a lot... Um, I like the way that it organizes I like the way that it organizes things for me. In saying that, can I find what I'm looking for right now? No. Come on. The blanket is the Oh come on, I've totally saved it. You're joking, I bloody well have it. Oh Christ. I'll find it later. Anyway, it's amazing. It's got like a natural background and then maybe I saved it on Instagram. It's got a natural background and then it's got kind of like crosses <laughs> of um, colours. And I think that would be really, really pretty. So I'm hoping to do that at some point. Um, I loved this. I thought that it was really great colour work. I think it's very, um, I think that it would be a good colour work mitten to begin with. There's really no long floats. Um, I think it's interesting enough to look really gorgeous and like, wow, that's a really incredible mitten, but also not so complicated and not the charts are not so, um, different every single row that you can't like get used to the whole color work thing. However, also I do acknowledge that working in a small circumference and also having to do the, um, thumb, all the thumb stuff, not super complicated, but just adds to it a little bit. So, you know is what it is but totally recommend and I just freaking love these so cute so yeah these are all my mittens as you will have seen in my last couple of videos there are more mittens that I'm working on can I hold them up all at once perhaps not I do not have all the hands mm -hmm. I'm like a card dealer Ta -da! mitten dealer um, I just used all my mittens to put my glasses back on my face. Um, as you will have seen, I've got two more pairs of mittens that are half completed, so the collection will be growing. Um, and I like I like knitting mittens. I find them, particularly colour work mittens, I find them really enjoyable. I do think I would like to knit another pair of actual full-blown um, mitten-y mittens, selbu mittens. That's definitely my preferred style. And I think I'm, I'm inclined to... I really enjoyed knitting the Bobby Dazzler pattern by Kerry Malley and I think I will knit a full like rather than modify them the way I did um, which you'll be able to see in episode four if you're really interested they, I'm thrilled with them like they're looking amazing but I do think I will knit a pair that are the full completed without the modification and I'm also tempted to knit a pair of those for my grandmother so um, I just think she would really love a pair of those so there's Bobby Dazzles in my future um, but I also just, I don't know, I love, I love a Selby mitt. Um, yeah, cool. You know what? I'm going to do beanies in a separate video. I just think, you know what? Maybe people aren't interested in them or, you know, you want to do them in little chunks. Maybe you just want to have little, little bite size pieces. So I'm going to, I'm going to pause and I'm going to do the next one with my beanies. I have a few beanies. They're cute. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at the Knitting Serenity Society. Wait, hang on. No, it's not that. The Serenity Knitting Society. I'm almost pretty sure I said it wrong in my last video too. I should really work out what my name of my podcast is, but it's a little bit of a tongue twister. The Serenity Knitting Society. I'm over on Instagram. I'm Serenity Knits 23 on 
Ravelry. I actually got friends on Ravelry. So I, I had felt sad that I didn't have any friends on Ravelry. And I actually have friends now because some of you guys are finding me. I don't know how the heck you're finding me, but you're finding me. <laughs> um, probably not that many people with Serenity in their name, hey? Um, yeah. Thanks for hanging around. And uh, next up, beans. Okay.